sleeping on the job again, dude. This is where I live. <laughs> Thing is, you're not actually joking that much, are you? No. Not in a minute. What is going on? Why are the lights off? I just turned them off for more dramatic. All uh, right, like effect. it's morning time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would say, Dav, let's go outside. Um, but fuck that. Uh, Should we stay in? It's a bit well, damp. Your car park's pretty busy though. Do you want to have a butcher's? Have you got a device to keep rain off? My hands. <laughs> Hang on. What have we got? You know when you look at something and you don't know where to start? Often, yes. I have that every day, pretty much. Busy, we, isn't it? We don't normally see it as sort of... Oh. I'm gonna need to hire some more minions. <laughs> Definitely. I need a parts guy anyway, so if you're Swindon based and no Etka inside out and cars, then give me a shout. Because we do need a parts person. But anyway, that's a lot of chatter for an intro, isn't it? It is quite a lot, yes. Wow. Let's get through it then. And we'll wander you around because Dad's on holiday next week, so we're trying to cram it all in this week. Oh, the magic is ruined! Oh. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, welcome to another episode of Anchor Revival. Because uh, I think this is what was chained to the Exxon Valdez before it sank. Um, this is an RS6 block, a BUH, that's been sent to me. And it is what we like to call in the professional world as <laughs> um, Sorry, if you've got kids watching. Uh, but they need to understand that's an adjective. Indeed. It's not a noun. Um, it's an amplification word. And this needs amplifying. This needs melting. Uh, so it turned up in this box, not wrapped, literally in the box with the crank next to it rattling around. And the, it was on its side. It's taken chunks out of the leading edge of the deck face. It's taken chunks out of the top of the breather gasket and water jacket. I mean, you can see these. It's taking a big chunk out here and here. So we've got big bruisings on them. Um, it's been painted at some point in its life. Uh, and it's been run on rusties or rusty coolant because that's rotten. The timing gears on the end are rotten. The deck face is pitted to buggery from corrosion. And you can even see the orangeness of the water jacket. Yeah. Not good. Um, yeah, not good at all, mate. Not good. And then you have some gears that look like they're off a 1980s BMX that's been left outside in a council estate rainy garden. Mate. You know what I'm saying? So. What are you supposed to do with that? Uh, nothing. Too far gone? Nothing. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't touch that. Not a thing. I'm not decking a block. Not on one of these engines. Um, yeah. So anyway. We'll leave that be. Uh, Mitch is putting uh, KW height adjustable springs on a rate. Hello. Hello. Um, so we've done quite a bit to this. Remap, wheels, um, suspension. Uh, he's got a new shiny steering wheel to go on and a few, what else do we do? Uh, um, hang on, do you want to? Spaces. No, I'll tell him. You need right. to stay out of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, carbon clean, exhaust, Filter kit, uh, suspension, wheel alignment, camber shim kit, steering wheel and a remap. So that's fine. Big job. Big job. Big job. Um, yeah, it's trying to get that buttoned off. Look quite cool and it's done. Are they the wheels under there as well? Yes, mate. They're quite blingy. Blinging wheels. Yeah, so we just put them on so we've had them built up, put tires on them. Uh, the Lambo, which is, is that Friday's video? It is. So the Lambo video has already gone out about what we did to fix it. The boys are just finishing off the service uh, and the new coils are going in, new plugs are going in. So that is okay. As recommended. Um, so that's sorted. Uh, nothing's happened with the ZX. And then, uh, should we do some questions? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, paintball ref Josh. Is there a ref in paintball? I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. That's really cool. I guess it makes sense. You get sent off if you shoot the ref. <laughs> Uh, is where it? is the crank sensor on these engines? I have a misfire coming from cylinder three and figure I'd do a compression test. The crank sensor is down the left-hand side of the gearbox. Um, yeah, uh, right in line with where the flywheel is, but on the side. So it's left-hand side of the gearbox on its side. It's a bit of a pain out to get to, but yeah, it's all right. Um, R8 FKL, what differentiates the Huracan Porfermante mechanically from the R8? Gen 2 V10 Plus, uh, not a lot really. Um, the Perf engine has titanium valve train. Um, the cams are different, but I haven't jigged the cams to tell you exactly what it is. It's probably overlap, it won't be lift. Um, the manifold's the same, the injectors are the same, throttle body's the same, the bottom end's pretty much the same. Uh, a lot of it is just the top end, uh, the camp, the valve train side of it. I'm trying to think what else. Um, and then obviously the ALA, so all the aero stuff around it. Suspension's the same. Obviously the dampers are different, but it's the same layout, the same sort of suspension geometry. So, yeah. Pretty similar. Yeah, yeah, they are similar. They are similar. Everyone says they're 640, but they're not a million miles away power-wise on our dyno from what a plus is. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't freak out about it. I tell everybody with a plus anyway, don't map them, you don't need to. I had a guy with a 610-4 in yesterday. I told him not to map it. He went somewhere, got it mapped, and he goes, it just, it wasn't right. So yeah, we don't, we don't map pluses really. You, you, there's not much to be had. People go, well, you can gain loads of power from them. You bloody can't. Yeah. So, uh, Dennis Reed, did you get demonetized on the broken Lamborghini Hurricane video for talking like a normal person would? i.e. swearing all the time. Davlard doesn't need paying for that one as he failed to bleep anything out. Um, no, I don't think we do, do we? We try to be good, but sometimes. I think that you, you're normally going to get demonetized for using copyrighted music or if the yeah. radio is on and it picks it up more than having a slight potty mouth. Yeah, because we, we mark it as not for kids, don't we? I think you get yeah. in trouble if you say it's kid friendly and then yeah. you sort and of make it Let's not. face it, there are channels out there that swear an awful lot more than we do. Yeah, and they go drifting round roundabouts and try selling illegal trades. So, you know, what else you can do? I'm not that kind of level. Talk to me nicely. <laughs> uh, Andy Begbie, how do? Going back to a question you answered a while ago. I also follow a guy, Twin Engine Corsa. That's your mate, innit? Beardy. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And just saw a vid of a car on a twin roller dyno, but only running on one roller. Is this not efficient or is it just like your single roll diet? Right, okay, there's two things that might be. So if they've strapped it up on a single roller dyno, on a twin roller dyno, and they've strapped it up on a single roller, and it is a proper like LPS, it should be running both rollers, then they're idiots. But some Mustang dynos don't have adjustable wheelbase. I'm sure it's Mustang, and they have like a set of four rollers at the front and you can sit it in any of those. So I haven't seen the video, mate, I'd have to look, but no, normally twin roller cars should be on both rollers because what they do is they let the car climb up out of the roller to give a high horsepower figure. Um, so yeah, I'd need to see what dyno it was to sort of give a better answer there. Riding with Sam, anyone know the reason that Yamaha won't support riders at the TT? Seems crazy to me. Not at all, dear boy, because people die. And that is pretty much top and bottom of it. So the only factory team uh, that goes to TT is Honda and Honda have a massive history with it. Yamaha factory won't support roads. So you can go and buy an R1 and you can build it the best you can to be a super bike, but you won't get Yamaha back in. So they won't support that or they, they won't support uh, the Northwest or anything uh, like no. that. Yeah, they don't support roads. Um, and that's purely because what they, how they feel about it, which, yeah. is, which is fine. Um, there are BSB teams that will not let their riders ride roads. You side for certain BSB teams and that is it. You are not doing a road. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Um, uh, Mikleshkov4805. Do you have any updates about the TTRS 8J, which is without an engine? It's still without an engine. Well, I got an engine. It's just sat in my engine room. Um, I need to... I just need to get on with it, mate. But it's like everything around here. 
Um, Adam two five three two five publicly subscribed to you one year. Oh, cool. Uh, do you guys do ZF upgrades? Thank you for subscribing. And we don't do ZF upgrades. I don't do autos. Um, or diesels. Or diesels. No, the only people I can think of who would be able to help you on a ZF, depending on what it is, not saying they're the only ones, but all the RS6 stuff we were doing, we were sending to at the end, because I couldn't get parts. When, when we kind of came here, I stopped doing them really. The, the, the gearboxes out of the C6 RS6s, we just sent them to Tio in Poland, who does all of Sport Miles, all of NRCs. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, don't, I don't do autos. There's a lot of specialists out there. Uh, we just stick to the DCT stuff out of the R8s uh, and the Lambos. Um, and that's about it, really. And I've got a quick question. Go on, then. Quick so, question me away, boy. Talking to somebody the other day, a Aww. mate of mine, oh, nearly, um, about the DCT. Yes. Um, why did they not put one of those in the RS6 ever? Um, I think a lot of it is to do with the mechanical layout of the transmission. So this is the same reason why the Aventador, through all its life, has been stuck with a single clutch gearbox. Yeah. So like, a, like an SMG or an Artronic or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's because of the packaging. So if you think about how an RS6 gearbox is, it carries the gearbox, it carries the, obviously the clutch assembly, the gearbox, the center diff, and the front diff all in one unit. Yeah. So you've got the drive shaft, the prop shaft coming out the back and two drive shafts coming out the side. So to make a DCT do that, you've basically got to re-engineer the entire gearbox. Um, the other side of it is, is DCTs are very sort of sporty transmissions, you'd, you'd think. So when you're, st you're starting to think about how you put the gear, what car you put in the gearbox in. So like BMW don't use like the 240Is and stuff like that. They're, what are they, ZF8 speeds, aren't they? Tumbleweed. <laughs> <laughs> BMWs, M140Is, they're like, and stuff like 240Is and stuff like that. They're like ZF8 speeds, aren't they? Yeah, they're, ZF8 yeah, they're not DCT. DCT. Yeah, yeah. So they're autos. And they've spent a lot of time making an auto drive like a DCT. But I think a lot of it, mate, is um, just how they package it. Just yeah. how they package it. Like, they're so bloody complicated, them DCTs. But then to re engineer it out to work in. You know, you think the DCT, the Borg Warner family of DCT gearboxes goes in Huracan R and R8, which is a mid-engine car. So all of a sudden then, if you're trying to make that, you, you know, I don't even think there's a DCT gearbox in a rear-wheel drive car. Well, there's the a question. The DQ250, the 251, the 381, the DQ500, they're all gearboxes for front engine yeah. Front wheel drive across the frame engines. Yeah. So they're not longitudinal engines, they're transverse engines with the option for a Haldex to go for a rear Haldex. So. And that would cover everything from your, your Audi RS3, your RS5, RS4. Uh, no, uh, so no, it wouldn't now, would it? So it would cover, not your RSs. So it would cover your A1s, your A3s, your A, A4. The new A4s, are they still long engines? So, well, go it this way. It would cover all Skodas, because they don't do a longitudinal engine. They're all transverse. They right. cover all Seats, all transverse. It would cover all VW, all transverse. The only question would be in the Audi world would be the A3s, uh, sorry, A4s, A5s, A6, that sort of stuff, where I'm sure the engine are longitudinal. Um, but yeah. I don't know, mate. That is a... Because Borg Warner make DCT boxes. So... So there we have it. There we have it. Um, yeah, right. I got a rant, but two secs. So I have a rant. I could sense a rant on the cards. And I feel a little bit conflicted with it. Um, because some of it is exactly what my business was built on doing. And it's on being a free advice helpline. Um, so some of this, it's definitely got worse since YouTube started to take off. Um, but I get a lot of calls now of people uh, who are essentially running their own business or trying to fix the cars themselves, asking for advice. 
I genuinely ask you for like they'll they'll be blatant about it as well like yeah and I'm struggling how to deal with it or how to approach it without you know I've got a lot of clients that ring me up and go oh Rick you, you know what coolant should I put in my car or what oil should I put and that's fine that's what that's what we're here for I get a lot of message about it but then I also get a lot of people blatantly take the piss um, you, you know we already struggle with we get used I, I'll quote a job and I do a lot of quotes and then I'll basically my quote will be used to go and beat up Audi or beat up another garage to get them to do it cheaper yeah um, so I not waste time because I'm obviously very grateful for everybody that chooses to use us um, but I obviously get used in that respect but I'll also you, you've seen it mate how many times we try and do a video how often does my phone ring oh it's ridiculous it doesn't stop yeah all day long or, or if we're on a road trip somewhere the phone yeah. is going constantly yeah and you know we've had examples of people who've gone places to have work done and they've rung me and they've gone oh yeah yeah we've put we've put this on a car or we fitted this um and um my mechanic can't get this to work or he doesn't know what to do or you know or the garage ring me i had one last week where the garage someone rung me said oh i'm struggling to time a v10 up and i'm like what and it's your car like that's a major job he's like yeah 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 we took it me and my mate took it out so anyway we got cut off and i'm not a fucking idiot my phone tells me what the number is and i rung them back and it was like hello alan smith autos <laughs> and it's like yeah one if you're gonna take the piss be honest about it yeah and just go look mate i'm from another garage you know so i struggle to know how to deal with it because part of me is like i'm here to help but i'm here to help the people that want to use us yeah. not to arm idiots and that's what it feels like sometimes is all i'm doing is giving up my free time i could be looking after clients and getting my lead time down to look after more clients and i'm helping everybody else get smarter who has no intention of using us. Sure. If that makes sense. Um, you know, I've got a lot, a lot of rely reliable, um, loyal people who come to us, you know, and I have no problem if you're a customer or, you know, helping anybody or giving advice. I had a guy in France ring me up and he's like, Rick, really struggling. The car's doing this, this, this and this. What do you think? Give him some things to try. Never thought anything of it. He had the car recovered from France to me but he was honest he was in trouble do you know what i mean he's yeah. like look you know can you help i know I'm, I'm happy i'm happy to help but where i start to my patience starts to wear thin is where i'm helping another garage or i'm helping another mechanic or i'm helping someone because you've chosen to take your car there because it's cheaper sure do you know what i mean so i don't know i i struggle I, how do other businesses deal with it because if you run a lawyer and said, oh, yeah, 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 I'm, um, you, you know, I don't know, can divorcing my wife. Uh, can you help me, Mitch, is there? Well, why did that one come up first? Because that was in the back of my mind as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that came up first. Um, what, you, you can't ring a solicitor, yeah, and get free advice. No. Um, 100%. You, you, they turn around and they go, yeah, no worries, book in for a consultation. And you might get half an hour free. Yeah. But the other half hour they're going to charge you for. Yeah, and they'll I, so, probably charge you for it. So I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how to sit it. I don't know. I, you know, people have said, oh, maybe you should start a, um, a premium rate phone line. But then I'm punishing people for phoning me up to book in. Because let's be honest, the second someone figures out where you go, press one to book in, press two for a premium rate technical service yeah you're not gonna you're gonna press one in yeah of course um so i don't know i don't know how to i don't know how to position that i don't know how to deal with it i don't know whether it's just oh rick it's part of business suck it up and get on with it i think there's a couple of ways i would view it the first is in a sense it's flattering that people yeah. are coming to you with this yeah and a part of that is a victim of your own success with the channel yeah you know because if people feel that you give information away um, on the channel, yeah. then they can approach you directly, whether that's by social media or, or just calling you direct. Yeah, yeah. So there is that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I also get the fact that, you know, when it's businesses doing that, that isn't playing no, the game fair. I, I, and the thing is, right, is it, it like, I probably feel differently if it, you were honest about it. 
Yeah. So like, for an example, um, all right, we get on really well anyway, but um, Simon Norris messaged me asking for some help on his Lambo. Okay. And they give him help. But then the same thing is, I messaged Simon when we were doing Matt's car. Yeah. And so that- It's a two-way arrangement. Understand. It goes yeah. both ways. Yeah. You, you know, I've got no problem helping out clients or helping out prospective clients. I think where I start to uh, probably is, is what I think, I think when it gets my back up is when I feel like I'm having a piss taken out of me. Of course, yeah. When people either aren't honest and they're trying to spin a yarn to, because they don't know something or they've literally gone somewhere else because they're, they're cheaper and then, yeah, they're cheaper because they're not as good as me. And this is going to sound like an absolute thing to say now. But find someone in the country is good on, or is known, is as good as, has worked on as many, or knows our rates like I do. You won't find them, mate. Yeah. You won't. Which is the reason that there's, a, there's probably 23 parked outside right now. Yeah. There's a reason I work on, I buy more R8 parts per month than Audi D for R8s and Audi, the Audi network shifts. I outsell the Audi network entirely on R8 parts now, every month. That is a Mate. big stat right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it got, we, we had uh, the sales rep from TPS come up with one of the part sales guys because they had to prove that they weren't selling to like a kit car manufacturer. Yeah. Because we probably buy 40 shocks a month. I probably go through, well, we do an oil filter at least a day. Do you know what I mean? And it's all R8 stuff. So I probably do 60 to 70 grand a month TPS. That's a big number. Mate, it's terrifying yeah. numbers. You, you know, so yeah, we shift, we shift a lot. So then when it's, you know, the guys who work for me are good. We, they, we're not a big team. You know, they've got a lot of experience. They're, you, you know, and they're here to give a service to you or to give a service to clients. Yeah. So then when people are trying to get a cheaper deal somewhere else, yeah, that grates. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, I think so. But I don't know how to deal with it. I don't like. There's lots of businesses out there. Cut me on now. Um, who must have the same problem? Quote in I can deal with. Jordan gets it all the time as well. He had a guy met wanting full PPF on a car. Jordan quoted it out, and he's like, "Oh, that's expensive." Went and got three other quotes, and then come back with tail between his legs to Jordan. Yeah. Because they were thousands cheap, dearer. You know. Um, I guess the only way for you to be out of this, if you've got some kind of internal gatekeeper who picks up every call first yeah, and, and kind of yeah. fields them. Yeah, because the other side is, is everybody normally, this is, this is something sort of Kate says as well, is everybody rings up wants to talk to me. And we've had people get shitty with Kate on the phone. Yeah. You, you know, we've had people on the phone to Kate go, well, so you can't help me at all then. And Kate's like, well, yeah, I can book you in. I don't want to book in. I just want to chat to someone about my car. Yeah. Because they want... Help, yeah. help or advice so it is it is difficult to manage um, and I don't I don't know how to position it I don't want to seem un ungrateful of course not I'm extremely grateful because without people who come to us there is no business absolutely and I'm always happy to give advice I'm on forums I'm on chats and stuff and I'm always happy to give a point but yeah I think it's when people sort of piss down my back and tell me it's raining that yeah. the ones that sort of great me um, well, there we are. I, if I didn't know, I'd go and figure it out. Yeah. It should be the same. Pay your money on Elsa or Irwin, because it tells you everything. You know, go pay your Odis license. Yep. Because that's all the information you need. You don't need to ring me up and to find out how you time up a V10. You just got to pay. Yeah. And everybody can. Yeah. But, you know, if you want Lamborghini technical information, three and a half grand a year. He pays your money. There we go. And I think that's the. You, you know, you can't. You used to get the old auto data book that told you torque specs and how to fit your camber and stuff like that. It's none of that for supercars. You know, the McLaren stuff. We figured it out. Yeah. We bought engines and took engines apart, and you know, we bought the diagnostic equipment, ten grand for the, the diag stuff. You know, mate, I'd hate to think is what is stood in that trolley there. But you pays you pays your money. So when people try to shortcut and get to the get to the answer straight away and sort of take the piss out of me. I think that gets me back up a little bit. Fair play, bud. Because at the end of the day, this is it to feed my kids. 
and three decades. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I enjoy doing cars, but if I won the lottery tomorrow, and this is a question for everybody out there, if you won the lottery tomorrow, would you still be doing this? I wouldn't. No, I know you wouldn't. I wouldn't. You'd have a race team, wouldn't you? Worse. It, yeah, 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 I'd go and do something I love. It would still yep. be technical. Yeah. It would still be, and I do love what I do. I am fortunate to do what I do, but I enjoy working on cars. I hate running a business. Yeah. I am not a businessman. I'm not a businessman. And you know, it's when people turn around and think they're entrepreneurs when they pay and give out invoices. The, um, yeah, so I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay. It must be everybody, loads of people who watch this must run their own businesses. You must face the same thing, especially if you're good in your field. Um, so I'd love to know your thoughts. Because um, it is. I'm, Grateful and flattered and equally pissed off, all in the same feeling. I don't know what that feeling is. Well, flat pissed. On that note. Flat pissed. No? Flat. No. Flat. <laughs> flattered off. No, I don't know. Come up with a name for that as well in the comments. How can you be flattered and pissed off all at the same time? Plastered. But yeah, 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 yeah. So. Right. Have a nice holiday. Thank you. Where are you off? I'm going to Spain. What, on uh, like a hedonism holiday, <laughs> you and the missus? <laughs> no? Nope. In a, your Borat thong. <laughs> Ladies, very nice. <laughs> right, smash buttons. Tell me what you think. Am I wildly out of kilter on this? Uh, or am I bang on the money? But it'd be nice to know what other people think. This is where being in a network of other business owners is valuable, I think, because they either go, uh, you just got to suck it up and that's what it is, or they go, I do it like this. Yep. Um, you know, this is why me and Jordan have loads and loads of chats about business because nobody understands, only me and him, do you know what I mean? You, you know, first thing you do in the morning is look at the bank, last thing you do in, at night is look at the bank, it never goes out your head. So. Yeah, smash buttons, let me know, and I'll see you on the next one.